So in order to use this strategy on any rear pad and make it into a front, these are the materials you're going to need. A variable temperature soldering iron, some flux and rosin core solder. I would recommend getting some leaded solder. Heat shrink tubing, two colors of silicone wrapped braided wire, these, I believe, are 18 that you then need your choice of sensor. For this project, we're going to be using multiple small ones. You can also use multiple of these. Just have this one on one zone, this one on another one, or top and bottom. And this one, pint, will also work. It's a little bit smaller. And this is a good strategy as well. It just helps it kind of fit to... Uh, concave a little bit better you need sheets of 12 by 12 point zero two inch so that's two hundredths of an inch thick craft plastic 3m 77 ad adhesive spray a dremel with a engraving router bit set a heat gun or hair dryer, a hot glue gun with some glue sticks, several, you'll need se several, tweezers and scissors. Okay, so before we begin, we, let's do a quick little overview, quick overview on sensors just to help your wiring here. Um, so we've got a V1 Pint XR. Now, if you look in here, you see a, a bunch of little lines, right? You see the left line goes up, or it goes over to the left, up, and as it goes over across the top, it reaches down all the way to the bottom, and if you follow it, all the way across it goes through both sides the middle post goes left and right and extends all the way up but the middle stops at the middle of the sensor and then the right goes all the way to the right and then comes up and stops at the end now if you look at the pint we've got a very very similar setup here except for the left goes up to the left and then reaches all the way over it goes down and to the left and stops up to the left and stops but the middle well well the right obviously is the same as the left it goes over up and down and to the right and then the middle goes to both of them and comes around the outside and comes in and meets them from here and it's the same thing for the XR left left right right middle is middle okay so what that says to us is that this left pin is one foot pad zone this right pin is a foot pad zone and the middle pin is the ground that kind of brings everything together i guess you could say and it's the same thing with the xr and the v1 is the same thing except for if the ground is not in the middle the ground is on the left so just keep that in mind as as we're w w wiring this stuff and then if you look inside the sensor in, you have these two layers that when they make a connection the signal turns on and then when you level the board out your board engages 
so these it's it's essentially it's when they turn it's when they connect it's on when they disconnect it's off and these little dots here are the gasket that separates the two lit layers when you step off the pint is the same way you can even see the dots in there the v1 is a li little bit different this is a force sensitive resistor where it doesn't just turn on and off it, there there's there's a variable to to the pressure and how much um energy it can expend um so because this doesn't have the little dots on the inside what they did at future motion was take a sheet of plastic here a sheet of plastic here and then lay a sheet of plastic over it and then the foundation acted as the gasket so when you stepped on it the plastic would come down and in, and put pressure on there returning about three three volt three volts of pressure to the, the controller um and then when you stepped off the plastic would lift up and then disengage so that's essentially what we're doing here but we're applying that strategy to a concave surface so we have our sensors here and the thing about these is that they don't have the little black connectors on them and not only do they not have them on them you don't want them on them because those little things take up a lot of space in the uh, in the rear of the cush pad so instead of using the black connectors we're going to solder directly to these tiny little posts here now the problem with that is that they're in this little flimsy little plastic here and if you apply too much heat it's just going to melt the plastic so I'm at about I'm at about 415 degrees here. It's not very hot. You get a little flux on my post. Give a little tin. Let's see if you can see. It's a little bit malleable. It's not quite as liquid. See, it's not totally a liquid. It's still kind of hanging on there. Well, it's obviously liquid, but... So now we're going to tin these posts here. Just a little dab, and it's all good. Now you take your wiring and give yourself about, I don't know, like eight inches or so for like, that's about right, okay. Um, use wire cutters for that, not scissors. Stripped. flux I can turn it up a little bit on this so I just turned it up to about 450 or so got myself a little bit more solder I'll turn that up a little bit more about 480 right now just so I can get it to flow in these strands
Alright. And now we go ahead and attach one to the other. see that, that I just hit, barely touched it, it sealed right up. And I can take that off. And I'll put the black on there. Just a nice little touch. those two it's not the cleanest right now but I'm just trying to show you you just put one wire on one another on the other okay so now that we have our six sensors wired and ready to go we need to figure out where to place them now the best way to place these is where your you know the ball of your foot and the heel of your foot are going to be resting the most often I usually I my feet are size 12 okay so first off I don't ride pints uh, second mine are spaced out a little bit farther out here okay so let's say if I was making this for me they would probably be like maybe out here so okay but if you've got size like maybe I don't know nine size eight feet you'd want to bring that in just a little bit all right so what we need to do first we need to find out where we're gonna put these on the sensor okay so we're gonna do one side at a time one two three so right there we've got a good setup now when you're placing these this is what you need to watch out for you need to make sure that you have a nice little space of corner here on each of the four corners you need you you can't have it all the way up there because the, the, you need a little bit of space for the gasket right there. So give a little bit of space on each of the four corners. One, two, three, four. All right. And then double check the rear and see where they're going to come out. Okay. So it looks like these two are going to be fine. But the top one, when we have it right where we want it, Okay, now actually, if you, I don't know if you can see, but I've already marked this pad where I have my sensors at and where I want them and where I want them to be d d d d dr 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 drilled out. So, <clears throat> as you see right here, this little notch lines up with that. And then the ribbon comes up right in between these two guys same thing down here okay so I know exactly where I want my sensors to go and then where exactly they're going to be drilled through but here's the problem so when I did that so if I drilled that through I'm going to be coming out of here where a large amount of material is missing and some that has to do with, with the pint controller box so this one needs to be rotated so that way it will simply go under the other one in the back okay so if I have this one here lined up how I wanted it and then that one here all right so that's how it's gonna that's how it's going to be laid right there so that way when this comes out it comes out in this thicker material 
because in this thicker material we have to take our Dremel right here and we have to create holes for the ribbons to go through and then channels for the ribbons and wiring to lay so that's our next step <clears throat> okay so when you're when you're going through these channels and doing dremeling out the channels you need to make sure that you go deep enough so that the wires will sink down and that this will remain as level as possible if, if you see a couple little bumps coming up that's fine because we're gonna seal it in hot glue and your weight along with the heat from the controller will slowly kind of settle that in to, to any cracks and crevices and it's not really gonna damage anything um, but that's only if it's like just barely over like you really got to make sure that it is as level as possible when you're when you're done doing this I would really recommend getting a little router engraving bit set. I got this right off of Amazon. I think it was like $12 possibly. And then just uh, just got to figure out which ones work best for you for how you want to do this. I usually drill holes first. And then channel after that okay so once again I have that one lined up with that little guy and then the ribbons here I want my ribbon to go in there and then it's gonna fold back now I don't fold it forward because if I fold the both of them forward they just run into each other not only that, but since normally you're going to want to do this on a concave pad, the concave goes in and down, you know. So you're automatically going to have less material to work with in the middle than you are on the sides. So the best bet, yeah. See this right here? This, this right in the middle is absolutely nothing. There's not a whole lot of material here. But out here, there's quite a lot of material. Okay, so when you're dremeling through, you're always going to be slightly aware of how deep you really are. Well, excuse me, you need to be slightly aware of how, 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 how deep you really are. That's what she said. And then, um, so, let's do it. Alright, so there we got those. So, now that we have our holes drilled, we need to go back and set these back where we had them before. See, boom. Right, so that's going fine. That's going to go in there. That's going to go in fine. And then go down here. Make sure that guy's good. Let's see how these match up. Okay, so how I'm going to do this one is probably I'm going to bring these over. Everything, most dremeling, you need to try and do all the dremeling on the outside, okay? Because this stuff gets really thin towards the middle and down here. This one doesn't seem too bad right down here. So that's going to be pretty nice, even though the pint plug is open now. we got to get ourselves all lined up. Let's 
I like to use this little guy first to get my lines drawn out before I commit to them. All right, so. Okay, so we just gave ourselves an outline for the three sensors and the three ribbons. So one ribbon's gonna come in this way, one's gonna come in this way, and one's gonna come down. The wires are gonna come down here, and they're all going to get wired pretty pretty much together. You'll see, you'll, you'll, you'll see what I mean here. Um, and uh, so these three are wired in parallel, these three are wired in parallel, and then each of those go to each zone, which I'll, I'll, I'll show you where to do that on, on the plug that, that you can either salvage from another sensor or you can get from DigiKey. <clears throat> so now that I got this uh, come out and uh, framed out or traced out, that is where the pint plug comes in. Uh, also for a GT, that's where the GT comes out. If you have an XR, it comes out here. So, we've got our holes drilled out, we got our channels drilled out, that's really one of the most tedious parts. Alright, let's get these set, I'm going to go from the down, bottom up, and set these. Take off the backing. Line up with the marks that you made. One. Okay, now we got these placed where we want them. So take a little bit of tape. I'm just gonna hold these down so that they don't pump, keep popping up. Okay, now we got these kind of going to the same general area. Now, this is what I mean by run parallel. On this side, all three of the red are going to be twisted together, and all three of the black are going to be twisted together. That's right, sunshine. It's always best to cut it a little bit longer been a little bit too short.
strip them. I'd recommend maybe using wire cutters or wire strippers. So, now it helps to have some kind of pair of tweezers here just to help you hold stuff. Now, what needs to happen is that the ground needs to come together and then that is hooked up to the left, that is hooked up to the right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the soldering iron out, uh, connect these real quick, and then use a little tester that I made to be able to connect these to a XR and make sure that everything is functioning correctly. The sensors laid out, the wiring together. Now, before we glue everything down, we gotta make sure that the sensors are testing functionally and everything is all hunky dory. So now, we've got the ground connected, right zone and left zone ready to go. So now we test it. So here is how I test these pads. Uh, I got a little barrel plug there wired up to a few alligator clips. But what you're going to have to simply just wire it up um, to the actual plug. But do this before you hot glue everything down just to make sure you don't have to switch any sensors out. I haven't had to do that yet, but I'd rather uh, not have to uh, take apart a fully assembled pad in order to find that out. Black on black, one red, on red, and red on the other red. So there's one. So, you can see here, we've got our holes sealed with hot glue on all six. And the back has now been sealed, except for these two down here. Okay, but these, I took the little connecting thing off because these are going to be connected together down here where everything comes out.
Now we're on to the construction of the gas gasket. You've got your sensors placed. And what the plan is, is you need to create a foundation around and down the middle and then another layer on top for which you can apply the grip tape to. Depending on the concave of your pad, most of the time you're going to need to take the top layer, trace out the entire thing, and split it right down the middle, and then seal that. This one may not need that, but we'll see what happens. <clears throat> so pretty much, you take the uh, same craft plastic, the uh, 0 0.02 inches thick craft plastic you can get on Amazon. It's like um, you get 10 12 by 12 sheets for like 15 20 bucks, I think. They're, they're, they're a little bit pricey for just sheets of plastic, but it, it's whatever. So pretty much what you want to do here. line it up and just try and trace yourself out the foundation these are obviously some extra pieces of plastic that I'm using and when you create your boundary you want to give yourself maybe about a quarter inch of space away from the sensor so that side is going to look something like that so there we have left and right Okay, so we've got top, bottom, left, right, and middle. Now the middle, you want to extend a little bit because depending on the concave of your, of your pad, you may need to build up the middle just a little bit because it's the middle that's going to create warping in your plastic. Um, that's why all of these are being done in separate pieces so that way... That lays flat, that lays flat, that lays flat, that lays flat, that lays flat. But all of them together create, you know, uh, a level foundation for the top layer to sit on. Now, the tricky part is when you get to the more extreme concaves, like the wide, the platypus, stuff like that, you're going to start having problems with pinch corners which is pretty much where the, the plastic of the gasket meets the highest lip of the concave of the pad. And because the pad is concave and the gasket wants to remain flat, you get that small little triangle in the corner where you can start having issues, where um, sometimes in extreme cold weather, the cush material will contract a little bit and that will cause it to pull on the gasket and then create a little bit of extra pressure. So in order to circumvent that, all you need to do is add four corner pieces. So just something right here, right here, right here, and right here. All that does is just slightly lift above in those corners and again we're talking about 0 0.02 inches so it's, it's not very much um because as of right now the if we did not add the corner pieces the the top layer gasket would apply around 
a little over one volt of pressure to these FSR sensors. And um, <clears throat> most, uh, from what I know, future motion uh, needs at least three volts to, to activate. Um, creating those, so you could, you could use it without the four corner pieces, but depending on whether or not you like to ride all year long, um, which I do, those four corner pieces are absolutely detrimental to the um, sustained functionality of your modification to your pet. I don't, I'm not entirely sure if this one's going to need it or not. This, this, this one actually looks not, the concave doesn't seem too bad. I'm just going to lay the foundation and then um, lay the top on it and then see where the plastic is warping. And if it's warping too much, all I'm going to do is just simply just cut it right down the middle and then have the top be two sides. That's it. Now that you've got your pieces, we need to get them cut out and applied. Now, don't worry about the letters. There's a plastic film on both sides. So this is essentially what it should look like here with your foundation on. Now when I put the foundation on, I notice that the uh, mostly these two middle ones, the hot glue is a little bit too high and it would actually have gone higher than the gasket. So I'm going to take some heat and push that down a little bit. There we go. As you can see here, we've got four corner pieces. Now, I'm going to put those aside for now. took these off just to make it easier to do but now we take a large sheet The goal of the foundation of the gasket is to get the top to be as level as possible, but splitting it as half is a really good way to make sure it doesn't do that. So that's just what we're going to do now because this is a little bit iffy because it's hitting the edges really well, but there's a lot of space in between the middle. And that's not very good. So what I'm going to do is cut that in half. And I'm going to add one more strip underneath that. About, about right here.
Okay. So here is the full construction of the gasket and stencer layout before it's adhered and sealed. Okay. So I just took all of the plastic off of both sides and now it's quite clear. Let me just get rid of that stuff. This is the stuff I used to put it on, 3M77. Now, we let that set a little bit, come back, and every once in a while, give it another little press down. Whoop. Boom. Okay, so the next thing we need to get is a non-stick surface to put on the top of the gasket so that way when you press down nothing you know it doesn't stick to the sensor or anything like that and that could possibly happen uh, you know because you have the heat coming from the controller and then whatever outside temperature there might be condensation could theoretically possibly happen um, not 100% on that, but I'm just trying to be safe. So all I'm doing here is just getting a little square outline. Okay, so what I do to line them up is I line up the top gasket and then I glue these down like that and since they're equal you can just flip them and it'll line up well enough where the, uh, the paper should be lined over the sensors. Alright, so the sound was a little bit too much for me to record but if you see here I have the top layer of the gasket out on the uh, foundation and it's split along the middle um, just like the previous one doesn't matter whether uh, whether it's horizontal or vertical as long as there's some kind of separation so I've got the top layer here my four pieces one two three four and then here's my bottom piece and then what I'm going to do is take the parchment paper that I spoke of before <clears throat> and uh, place it on there directly over the se 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 sensors and um, now they're adhered. Now what we're going to do is sim simply just flip them over and then the, the parchment will be the only thing that, that touches the sensor. Here's a strategy on how I apply the sensor without getting any adhesive onto the parchment and no adhesive onto the sensors. Just take some paper, cover up the corners of, of the cushion cush material and the sensors, and I'll just Put a piece of paper over over it and uh, trace it out, cut it out, place it over. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just make sure you get a, a good good amount of 
ad adhesive on the foundation. Make sure your adhesive isn't going to spray out, you know, like at some weird angle. And just apply that somewhat liberally to the foundation. Try and be careful to not spray at an, at an angle where it's going to get under the paper. Try and, try and spray straight down. Now, once you remove the p paper, you'll have a adhesive only on the foundation and nothing on the sensors. I, I messed up a little here, so I'm just checking to make sure nothing got on the, the, the sensors. And um, let me go ahead and take our pieces, and we're going to go ahead and put, put them down. Now we got them down. I'm going to clamp the four corner pieces and give them a little bit of time to kind of set and adhere fully before I put the, e e e e the, the seal on it, the clear epoxy seal. So I was explaining that I usually used hand clamps and I do the four corners and then um, and then switch it and then just switch the pressure around and then seal everything in um, epoxy. <laughs> 